How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Sixkill, and welcome back to the Zodiac Trial. Now, um, we made one little alteration in our choice here and put us on a completely different path. Now Pig's betrayed everyone, shot ahead in the race, and is hiding out. And we gotta go find her. Because Bunny wants to murder her. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I wasn't particularly scared for my life, but still, Ox and Monkey were probably the two people I trusted the most at this point. They've both proven themselves to be nutcase. Nutty nut nutcases. Although Pig was on the list that a few minutes on that list a few minutes ago, so perhaps I wasn't the best judge of this sort of thing. Probably not a good idea to be a defense attorney then. The three of us began to search the left wing of the first floor. Not having to spend nearly as much time searching, we covered far more ground. Toward the end of the round, we'd briefly gone over the ma majority of the first floor. And yet Pig was nowhere to be found. How are we not finding her? It's not like she can hide in some super secret spot or something. Like Bunny said, we're looking for a human, not a trinket. That means they can move from spot to spot. They can listen to where people are moving. It's basically a large game of hide and seek. Seems like Pig's, Pig's pretty good at hide and seek then. For all we know, some other group has found Pig already. Where the, the case... Were that the case, wouldn't we have heard something already? I suppose. God, I feel like such an idiot. How could I not have known Pig was the other traitor? I was searching with her. Mouse, there's no blame to be assigned here. You don't know her as a person, so you're not adjusting to her personality yet. In your case, it'd be difficult to even tell what being off looks like. Additionally, in such a perilous situation, there are several reasons one could be off. You need to also detect the guilt in her offness to truly determine the answer. People greatly overestimate their ability to read strangers. Unless you're a trained professional, most people can only make informed assessments on people that they know, at least somewhat. Why, my specialty is reading people, and I would not have been able to tell. Well, it's nice to hear. You always know what to say to cheer me up, monkey. Like I said, I know you. Regardless of whose fault it is, we just need to look toward the future. Looking back is a waste of time. I know you conspicuously didn't take a side on whether or not it was my fault, Ox. And on the note of looking forwards, we should input our moves and go back to the cafeteria. Agreed. With a nod of her head, Monkey entered the nearby classroom. Say, Mouse, hit your right on me. Huh? I'm gonna stampede to get behind Pig. Why? At this point, everyone's probably gonna try and get as far as possible. If we capture Pig, we can reconfigure afterwards. But being close to the end gives us leverage. Okay then. I wasn't sure about this, but I went along with what Ox said. He seemed to know what he was talking about. I entered a nearby classroom and hitched a ride on Ox. You're not going to give me a choice? Then the three of us went back to the cafeteria. There, people were lamenting their lack of progress. Shifty little bitch. How did nobody find her? Is everyone searching properly? Dragon, no need to get so upset. The fuck are you saying to me? Um, she said there's no need to get upset. We'll find her soon enough. She'll run out of places to hide. She better. And like that, the television cut once on once more. Time to see the race results. Round seven has ended. Now let us see how the race has progressed. This is going to be an interesting one. Ox went to 15th space. And so did we. The tiger moved two spaces. Bunny began to hop and move once, but they were all using their abilities. Dragon used Dragon Breath to engulf lane 17 in flames. Snake ran one space. Horse moved three spaces. The sheep used Swift Sleep. They can make two extra moves next turn. The monkey chose to confess. The rooster had used Encouraging Crow to move the dragon four spaces. Why is rooster boosting dragon? The dog has chosen to confess. The pig has chosen to confess. Now let us hear some confessions. First up, Monkey. What on earth? Everyone's eyes to move toward Monkey. However, she simply stayed silent. Her arms were firmly in her pockets and her gaze wasn't even at the television. After a time, the Jade Empress spoke up once again. That confession was worth zero spaces. You suck. Next up, Dog. Again, attention shifted to Dog, but like Monkey, he didn't speak. It appeared those two deliberately chose Confession to just to move zero spaces. But Pig... 
I suddenly got worried. That confession was worth zero spaces, you suck. Next up, pick. I wasn't expecting to hear anything, but very faintly I heard a voice begin to speak. I am responsible for the online perception that Aaron Morris was guilty. The voice came from a place not far from here. Immediately several among the group, myself included, began moving toward the voice. Initially I planned to cover the incident from a total opposite perspective. I planned on pointing out the holes in the case, along with other sketchy rumours about Armadeus Bowen. We made our way to a classroom not too far from the cafeteria. There we saw a pig nervously shouting through a window. However, I was approached by a very influential media company with an absurdly generous offer. They were prepared to pay me a big sum of money, as well as get, in, get me in touch with some of their connections, and even subtly promote my works. Instantly, Horse went for the door trying to force it open, however for some reason it wouldn't budge. There was one condition. I had to do everything in my power to help promote the public narrative that Al Aaron Morris is 100% guilty. I moved closer to the window and saw that somehow Pig had found a bike chain. She used it in conjunction with a fixture on the wall to completely lock herself in the room. The media company seemingly had no connection with Armadeus Bowen and yet I knew this offer was shady. Of course it was shady. How could it not be? But I took it anyway. I posted an article after, after, cool, after article slamming Aaron Morris, talking about how incredibly guilty he was. I used sock puppets and false accounts to spread the work as far as I could. And if I saw any online articles taking the opposite view, I'd spam them with garbage and flag them as misinformation on social media sites. My methods produced results, and when I showed them to my employers, they were pleased. I knowingly helped per perpetrate a potential injustice simply to line my own selfish coffers. I'm selfish, despicable scum who only cares about herself. With that final cry, everyone went silent. Was this... Was this true? To be honest, it sound plaus sounded plausible. It sounded bad. Which means... That confession was worth... Five spaces. You're horrible. That's all the confessions we have for this round. Now, round ten has begun. Do your best and choose wisely. Five spaces? Damn it, we were played for fools. Doesn't matter, we're ending this now. Horse readied himself, preparing to slam the door down. He would rush headfirst into the room and deal with Pig himself. In this situation, what to do? Save. That's what to do. Always save. Because there's so many options. Yeah, encourage him. We've got to stop it. You can do it, Horse. Get in there and teach Pig a lesson. Horse nodded towards me. And just like that, Horse slammed into the door. The chain lock held. But with just a single shove, it was clear Horse would be able to break in soon enough. I sort of expected him to keep slamming into it just like he did, but after the first strike, he changed course. He began kicking at the door's hinges with the might of a sledgehammer. Before long, the castle's gate was open. Without a second thought, Horse stormed in. He didn't wait long to question why the room was suddenly filled with some sort of fog. Fog that was continuing to fill up the room, actually. Was there a fog machine in there? No, it wasn't quite fog, it wasn't quite that dense. Luckily for me, I was observing this with a bit of distance. For Horse, who had run straight into the thick of things, he felt the effects of the substance also al almost immediately. Ah, oh, because she was in the chemistry room and she knows about chemistry and shit. His entire form began to sag. He tried to walk around the center desk and stumbled. He tried to turn around but tripped on himself. Once he was on the floor, he struggled to pick himself back up. With Horse out of the way, I could finally see the source of the gas. It was coming out of a high den in high density from a beaker sitting on the table in the middle of the room. Was this... Did Pig set this up? There were a lot of chemicals in the lab back up on the third floor, but still. I knew she wanted to be a chemist or something, but to create something like this was ridiculous. And yet, I didn't know any other explanation there could be for the site. That was about all I could think about before the flash. In an instant, something incredibly bright flashed from the room and I lost my vision. Is that a fucking flashbang? Did Pig create a flashbang? I rubbed my eyes trying to recover. At the time I regained my vision, I caught the tail end of Pig who had apparently pushed her way through the doorway and was now sprinting down the hallway. Immediately I began to run after her. I wasn't the closest to her though, Dragon had already began her pursuit and Bunny was already pulling ahead of me to my side. At this rate it was inevitable that Pig would be captured and brought to justice. But if she thought her escape route this far ahead, shouldn't she be expecting this? As if to answer my own thought, Pig immediately turned around mid-run and threw two things at once. A bucket, which she'd apparently been carrying with her by her chest as she ran, which was filled with a tar black substance and a vial of something else. I don't know exactly what it all was, but 
I do know that... What I do know is that the bucket spilled all over the floor. And as soon as the vial crashed down onto it, a burst of flames lit up the hallway. Luckily enough, Buddy and I were far back enough to stay out of the range of the sudden inferno. Dragon, on the other hand, had kept her mind on a single track and ran into the liquid, right as it lit on fire. As the flames came up, she cried out. I expect Pig to use this distraction to turn back around and continue fleeing. But apparently Pig was full of surprises today. Instead she ran forwards and slammed into Dragon while grabbing a hold of her tablet. The result? Pig was able to flee the fire with Dragon's tablet in her hands. I even heard her shout something. I'm sorry. Noted, Pig. Dragon on the other hand stumbled back and fell onto the fiery floor. We had to act immediately. Bunny looked at the situation and after a brief pause, tried to scooch around the fire to keep after Pig. For my part, I risked the flames and tried to pull Dragon out of the fire. Unfortunately, Dragon had got some of the black substance on her clothes and it continued to burn. I pulled off Dragon's jacket and jeans in an effort to stop it. At this point, the others had caught up to me. Sheep and Snake both helped the effort to save Dragon. When all was said and done, she was badly burned, but not dead. Not dead yet. However, we have to find Pig fast. We don't even have the luxury to discuss a strategy. Everyone immediately split up and looked for her. Unfortunately for us, Dragon's tablet was our only way to try and stop Pig, so we need to capture her. Hey, now that's not right. Since Dragon used her Dragon Breath last turn, shouldn't Monkey have access to it? You're right. Oh, look at that. I can stumble into being useful every now and then. Okay, Monkey, you Dragon Breath the lane right before the finish line. The rest of us need to split up and search for Pig. Pronto. And like that, we broke off. We were in a panic state, hurriedly searching all over the school, trying to find her. I found a row of classrooms and decided to check them out one by one. A mistake. As soon as I grabbed hold of the handle, it was over. I honestly can't describe what happened next. Just in that, <laughs> just that, in a mere few seconds, I'd be lying on the floor, dead. But that was a blessing in disguise, because had I searched elsewhere, I would have eventually met a much bloodier fate. I got to pass on peacefully. Lucky me. King of Hearts, don't underestimate prep time. Say what you will, Pig actually has an incredibly creative mind and a lot of knowledge. With Tempo on her side, she's able to devise a plethora of tricks, following in her pace as a recipe for failure. Cool. I had a feeling letting him smash the door down would have been the mistake. Let's try to stop horse. Hold on horse, let's think about this. What's there to think about? Barging in there could be dangerous, and it isn't necessary. It isn't? Why wouldn't it be? She's out of options, and we can escape without her. Let's just take it calm, step back, and think about the situation rationally. Paul stared at me for a few seconds, then with a sigh he took a few steps away from the door. Okay, cool. Let's just think about this for a bit. Mouse is right. Thinking about it rationally, there's not an immense rush. The confession took us off guard, granted, but it's a one-time use thing. Now she truly only has one option. We could definitely get her with the dragon's breath. Just then, through the door, Pig shouted out, 8667. Monkey, if you want to end this, input that. God damn it. In an instant, Dragon covered Monkey's ears and tried to bring her away from the door before Pig could say anything more. Unfortunately, the damage had already been done. Did you hear the numbers Pig said? Unfortunately, I did. Ah, well then. That truly is a shame. I believe we must kill her at this point. What? Snake, how could you say something like that? You're really just going to kill off one of us like that? It's the only way to guarantee that Pig gets hit by the Dragon Breath next turn. Any other method is imprecise. So you're suggesting we commit murder? Snake has a point. I mean, since Monkey is going to be executed anyways. Sheep, you too? I mean, from Snake it's one thing, but you? I understand the impulse some of you may have after hearing Pig's outburst just now. The threat of imminent death clouds minds. I bet we all take a minute to breathe in and breathe out. Hands up and hands down. <laughs> that's better. Now then, let us explore the facts, shall we? Right now, you're all feeling scared, and that's okay. This fear is tempting you to make actions you otherwise would not. However, I would implore you to think about this logically. Have I not already proved myself to be on the side of the group's survival? What reason would I have to go along with Pig's absurd request? What was your request? What does 8667 mean? I really should know this, but I don't. We can never really know for sure if you're on our side. People lie. People lie all the time. It is true. People lie. But sheep, 
Don't people lie for a reason? What reason would I have to lie? So you could survive. Nobody could... Nobody could just accept death like this. At least not somebody like you. You're right, sheep. Death is not something we can easily accept. Even now, fear still gnaws at me. The fact that I'm able to face my fate with my head held high is an exception, not the standard. You're just saying that. Okay, let's recount the facts. By simply inputting the code Piggy yelled out, I would not be able to escape death. Rather, I would be moving forwards, taking me out of the last place position I would need to secure my own safety. The only person I would help by inputting the code is Pig. I'd be killing not only the group, but myself by going along with their request. So you see, there's no possible way I'd take that action. Sure, you wouldn't input that code, but your ability. It'd let you use Rooster's encouraging crow, right? With that, you could just send Pig to the finish line without moving yourself. That is true, I suppose. However, I have no intention of doing so. I promise I shall input what you wish when I use my tablet. Ah, but that's the trick of the matter, isn't it? We have no way of verifying that until it may be too late. And to be honest, Mikey, I can't say I buy your little suicidal act here. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't think someone could be down to take a dive. Lord knows I would be. But last round you confessed nothing, right? The only reason I could figure you for doing something like that would be if you wanted to be last when Pig finished first. At the very least, I thought that that might be in your back of your mind. Mikey looked around the room, gauging each of our expressions. Then with a heavy sigh, she simply shrugged her shoulders. I would argue more, however, by merely looking at you, I can tell that this is decided. Very well then, do what needs to be done. Hold on everyone, are you serious about this? No, she couldn't simply just be accepting this, could she? Even if she's going to die anyway, to kill her herself, that's horrible. We can't do this. Mouse, please. It's better this way. No, but this is wrong, isn't it? Is it? If it ensures the group's survival, I don't think so. So anything's cool if it helps the most people? Mouse, your resistance to this shows me that you haven't accepted the fact that, one way or another, I'm going to die here. I am, so please resign yourself. I knew Monkey was right. I felt tears begin to water in my eyes, so I... So to save myself further embarrassment, I took a seat and recused myself from the conversation. Still, it played out to the side. They began to argue over who needed to carry out the deed. I hope you realise you're asking somebody to murder you, monkey. I am aware, was this not the group's will? If I proposed it, I may have an obligation to handle things myself. No, I can do it. Are you sure? If I must? Ah, you weak ass, just stand back. I got experience with violence, so I can handle things. Have you killed before? No, but I got pretty damn close. How hard can it be? Incredibly hard. But if we're talking about who's best equipped for this sort of thing, I'm a cop. I'm always prepared to make a shot if I need, if need, in the line of duty. Oh, I bet you're just itching for an excuse to make the shot. Everyone, silence. I'll kill Monkey. Rusty, you're an actor, right? I am. That's exactly why I need to do this. I'm afraid I don't follow. Actually, murdering someone with my own hands? That's something I can tap into in the future. If I do this, I can become the greatest dramatic actor the world has ever known. That's exactly what I've been missing. This is what will bring me over the top. Rooster, I don't really know if this is the sort of thing you want to be able to tap into. Ox, I insist. Let me do this. I can do it. After a brief silence, it appeared no one would contest him. Very well, Rooster, you will do the deed. If I was a monkey, I'd refuse. I'd make someone else do it. Someone who would do it efficiently and quickly. For the sake of everybody here, I would ask that I be killed in a separate room. Why is that? I can say without a fair amount, with a fair amount of certainty that seeing my dead body would be incredibly scarring. It would be for the best that we shield the line, the sight of death from as many people as possible. Alright, monkey. You just come with me to a nearby classroom. We'll get the job done. Oh, no, I don't know, how, don't know how much I like the just the two of you being in there when we kill you. Seems suspicious. Very well then, Bunny, you can come along as well. Me? As you said, you're a cop. You will likely you will likely will suffer the least mental damage from watching things unfold. Alright, if it'll help. Like that, Bunny and Rooster walked over to a nearby classroom and shut the door. Two or three minutes passed in silence. Then Rooster exited the room. Instead of addressing us, he walked by us, moved to the cafeteria. He grabbed a kitchen knife and then returned to the classroom. As he passed by, I saw his face. It didn't look good. Not that I was one to talk, I could only imagine how sick I looked to the others. A bit after that, Bunny and Rooster exited the room. Both looked shooken up. 
Still, Ox went down to business. So? It's handled? Ah, yeah, she's dead as a doorknob. Here's the proof. Bunny held up a tablet. However, when he turned it on, it became clear the tablet didn't belong to him. It was Monkey's. He clicked on the information button, and the screen changed accordingly. It talked about Monkey's ability, Monkey See, Monkey Do. And it showed Monkey's personality written on big green letters, content. She really was doomed from the start. That personality, and her personality, she never had a chance to live. I silently cursed Brian with all my might. Damn him for putting us all through this. For putting such a kind woman through this. A woman dedicated to helping others. Damn him to hell. If I escape this place. But no, I couldn't think about that now. Now I needed to move forwards. So whether or not Pigs uses a trinket, she's truly trapped next round. That gives us three rounds where she'll be unable to move. After that, she can move one space again. But again, we can use Dragon Breath that area. Essentially, if we're smart about this, we can lock her out of the entire game. What a shame. Had she simply held off and racing ahead for one more turn, she'd have had a real shot at escaping. As it stands, she's entirely out of options. Wasting six turns being burned is simply a penalty she just can't afford. You would have thought she'd have thunk things through a little better, eh? Yeah, but that's what a fear will do to you. The question now is whether or not Pig will finish in time. It's not whether the Pig will finish in time, it's whether the ten of us can finish together. To answer that, we need to take stock of our current trinket count. Everybody place the trinkets you have here. People complied, and at the end, a very small pile was formed. Five, really? Man, we suck. Well, perhaps if we split up, we'll be able to find more. Technically, we found seven, but Mouse let Pig take two. Are we seriously still on that? Yes, let's move on to more relevant matters. Naturally, we're going to need more than just these if we want to get out together. I thought about what Ox said for just a moment. I remembered the state of the board. I remembered the five rounds we had left. Did we need more trinkets? Was it possible to get the ten of us to the end on the same turn with just what we had? Oh, I don't know. I don't have enough inf you need to like lay all that information out in front of me. You know? Because, uh, that's not enough information. I mean, you probably can. Because we've got abilities like our ability, which lets us hitch a ride. Horse's ability lets him move three spaces. We've probably got enough abilities to get it done. Let's say Ox is wrong. Hold on. Huh? Actually, I don't think we need to spread ourselves thin like that. We can succeed with what we have here. Explain. Okay, so look at this. I walked over the television screen and used it to illustrate my reasoning. In round eight, I'll hit you right on Ox. He'll stampede again. Tiger and Bunny will run, for now. Dragon has to stay still and fire breathe again. Snake will just run. Horse gallops three spaces again. She will use all three of her actions to sweet sleep, which should give her a total of seven actions next turn. I can do that? Nothing says you can't. Rooster will use Encouraging Crow and Snake. Then we can use Monkey's Tablet to Encouraging Crow Rooster. But Monkey's dead. Yeah, but that doesn't mean her tablet doesn't work. Dog will run once, and Pig will get burned. Let's look at round nine. Ox and I will simply run one space each. Tiger, Bunny, Dragon and Snake will all use a minor trinket, moving four spaces each. Horse will run three spaces. Sheep uses all seven of her actions to sweet sleep, giving her a total of 15 actions next turn. Whoa. Yeah, Sheep's power is super useful. Rooster uses Encouraging Crow on the person furthest behind up top, that is Bunny. And then we boost Rooster in other four spaces by copying Encouraging Crow with Monkey. At this point, the closest person in front of Dog will be Tiger, seven spaces away. So using his rabid leap, he can move all the way up to where Ox and I will be. Pig is burned. So far, so good. Round 10. Ox and I run. Tiger, Bunny, Dragon and Snake each use a minor trinket, each moving four spaces. Horse gallops three spaces. The horses is the simplest. <laughs> Sheep uses all 15 of her actions to sweet sleep, giving her a total of 31 actions next turn. This seems a little much. Rooster uses Encouraging Crow on Tiger, moving her four spaces closer. Monkey uses it on Rooster, moving him four spaces closer. Dog just runs. Pig is burned. This is where things get tricky. Not really, we just need to be coordinated and trust one another. 
Which we can, we now can. Ox, tiger, bunny, snake and dog and I all run one space. Dragon, horse and rooster all use minor trinkets to move three spaces closer. Sheep gets 63 actions for next turn. Monkey, to make sure encouraging crow is still available, to copy monkey see monkey do, uses it on sheep. Is that allowed? I remember the wording Brian used. It should allow it, and pig is still burned. Finally, we come to round 12, our last round. Ox and I run to the finish line. Tiger, bunny, dragon and snake all use minor trinkets, all go to the finish line. Horse gallops safely to the finish line. Sheep uses all 63 of her actions to fucking zoom right into the finish line at, a spe at the speed of light. It doesn't matter what Rooster does. What matters is that Monkey uses Encouraging Crow and sends Rooster to the finish line. Dog runs to the finish line. And from there, Pig can do whatever she wants. Ten people have already tied for first. That can't be undone. Whoa. So you're saying... I'm saying we've already won. We've identified the traitors, so there's no reason to distrust anyone in the group. We have everything we need right here. So we can all stay in the cafeteria, taking turns to input in the restrooms or something. Pig, the alive threat, is trapped in that room over there with no recourse. She'll have to take on all of us to try and escape, which isn't happening. And we can all make it to the end, exactly within the time limit. This is game, set, and match. Everyone looked nervously towards each other. Nobody wanted to believe something so miraculous could be true, but it was. There was no need for some grand climax, some tense finale. We just need to follow a simple set of orders, and all ten of us would make it out alive. We beat Brian's twisted game. Well, I think we owe a hand to Mouse for helping us sort that out. Oh, me? There was no trouble at all. Just logistics sorting it as well. Yeah, it was very impressive. Everything in it tracked. I think we'd just stay here and do that. And just stay there and do what we did. It was an odd, ominous feeling. In theory, we'd already won. There shouldn't be any reason this wouldn't work, and just let us escape. But no one would exactly be celebrating until we're actually out of this demonic building. So instead we all sort of stood around in an odd silence. We kept an eye on Pig's door, made small talk, but that was mostly it. Everyone seemed to follow the plan to a T. Around 9, around 10. Time passed without any danger popping up. My mind wandered to strange places. Despite what had been said, what had been shown, I wanted to see Monkey's dead body for myself. I wanted to confirm it was real. Ultimately, what? To, oh no, why would you want to do that? I wouldn't want to see that. That's fucked. <laughs> that's, that's super fucked. Let sleeping dogs lie, man. It was a morose impulse, one best left unanswered. There's no good reason to expose myself to that sort of sight. To ignore Monkey's earnest request. Time passed without a threat. Then I thought I heard some noise coming from the room Pig was occupied in. Bunny and I, who were both nearby, went to check it out. As soon as I looked on, I realised something was wrong. Pig had collapsed on the floor and was spasming, gripping at her throat. Soon enough, she stopped moving at all. You also noticed that the bike chain was no longer locked. Don't go in there, dude. Without thinking about it, Bunny immediately went to enter the room. I wanted to stop him, but he didn't give me the opportunity. So instead I just followed him in. Oh my god, don't st stop! Wait, you're not going to? Well, I'll die with you. Fuck it. I wasn't sure what I was looking at. A glass bottle filled with something had broken right by Pig's body. Her neck was badly burned from some sort of chemical. It was disgusting to look at. What had happened? Then my attention turned to a nearby desk. A note had been placed on it. A note with a lot of writing on it. As soon as I looked at it closer, I realised Pig had written it. Was this a will of some kind? Did Pig do this to herself? I began to read it and Bunny looked over my shoulder. Whoever ends up reading this. If you're currently reading through this note, that, that means I'm dead. How scary to think about. I really hope that it doesn't come to this. But thinking about things realistically, I really have to accept that possibility. Currently I'm out of options. I'm going to be executed. But even to the end, I'm not just going to accept dying. With the chemicals I've brought, I've tried to create something that'll burn through the collar around my neck. If I'm careful with it, maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to get this off my neck. But I guess that didn't work, huh? Since I'm now, uh, dead, I guess this acts something like a will. Well, that's kind of weird. You usually only get this sort of talk in TV shows and movies. I never thought there'd be an applicable use for this sort of preface, especially one in my life. That's a bright side to dying. I get to go out in a cool way. Anyways, I've got a lot of explaining to do, I feel. I don't even know where to begin. I've written so many articles. It's gotten to the point that writing is second nature to me. Man, I wish I had that. Words sort of effortlessly spring out without me even having to think about it. 
I've got the structure down so well I don't even have to think about it. And here, in perhaps the most important thing I'll ever write, I'm struggling to think of what to write. It's funny. It's not even true, I'm not struggling, I'm rambling. Which is even worse in a way. I'd take a second draft of this, but I don't think I have that sort of time. So this is just going to be a stream of consciousness. I have, haven't lived a great life. It's not something I have trouble admitting. I mean, I've kind of known this about myself for the longest time. I just never really stopped to face it. That is until I had to make sure that I got that five space movement on the confession. Perhaps that's why Brian put that mechanic in. Everything I said there was true, by the way. I have both remorse and excuses. At the time, I really needed to make ends meet. I'd only just begun living on my own and up until this point, what I was doing wasn't sustainable. My parents didn't support my ambitions in the slightest. Rest was habitually late. So when I was offered the proverbial deal with the devil, well, horrid as it may be, I accepted it without much of a second thought. I mean, if not me, others would be contracted for this. The fact of the matter is, nowadays there's countless people holding on to these spider threads. Any one of them desperate to move, even slightly higher. It's Econ 1. When the supposed the supply is so much bigger than the demand, prices fall to the floor. People will fight for scraps, and the deal I got was more than scraps. Properly compensated, given tons of connections. My public evisceration of Aaron Morris gave me the life I have today. Aaron Morris wasn't the last person I took down. It's not like I've been approached with a deal like that ever since. It's just a simple fact of life. People are just waiting for others to fall. If you treat life like a zero-sum game, as most do, then anyone else falling lifts you up. At least somewhat. Moreau sh Schadenfreude. And in my constant drive of going forwards, growing bigger, I didn't even stop to consider what I was doing. I guess I always thought I'd stop to think about what I really wanted. What I should really be doing later when I had control of my life, but before I could even blink, I'm now at the end of it. The truth I've learned, the truth I've learned far too late, is that my thinking was flawed. Really, you always have control of your life. You make decisions every minute of every day. That is control. What else would you call it? Waiting for a good time to stop and make conscious decision of how to direct your life is a luxury we don't get to have. Because there's one time when we don't have control. When we're dead. Man, I could really write a good article with that as the thesis now. People love that self-help crap. I really hope this note never gets read. But it currently is, isn't it? The other thing I want to do now is apologize for my actions. I wasn't ready to accept my death, it's as simple as that. Initially I wasn't sure what to do. I might have just done nothing until it was too late. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that wasn't right. If I just finished first, I could keep on moving forwards. Who cares about what happened before that? The chaos and darkness of the race will erase what happens here. The truth will be written by the victims, the survivors. For all the cops care, Brian decided to execute you for any number of reasons. It was that flawed reasoning that infected my brain that drove me to this point. Only after being trapped in this room do I realize just how horrible I've become. But in this note, I have a final request. You're probably just going to crumple it up, but I'll give it a shot. Don't tell anyone what I did here. Just say I also gave myself up. That I also let myself be killed. Give me an honourable death. I don't want my legacy to be a failed coward dying alone in a room by a failed escape attempt. I had a pathetic enough life. I just want a better death. But that's too big of an ask, isn't it? Oh well. Once again, I'm sorry. I really, really, really am sorry. After that, there was a brief PS which caught my eye, but other than that, not much else. I stood there, unsure of what exactly to do. What should I do? What I even could do. This is the last testament of Pig, a person just like any one of us. She'd written this right before trying something stupid, something that ended up getting her killed. And now? What do you do? Obviously you present the note to the group, right? Couldn't tear it up, that's kind of a psycho. I guess we should bring this to the group. Bunny, who read the note over my shoulder, nodded his head. I agree. And like that, I returned to the cafeteria and gathered everyone. Then I read out what Pig had written to everybody. Well, everything minus the postscript. After I finished speaking, nobody knew what to say. It was what I th thought would happen, but one person made their opinion abundantly clear right away. Fuck that noise. That bitch tried to fuck us, fucking kill us all. And the moment that fails, she now kowtows like a little bitch. Like hell I'm going to cover for her. Dragon found an unexpected ally in the form of Tiger who nodded her head. 
Sounds like another desperate plea from Pig. Very like her. Well, I don't tend to do favours to those who try to kill me and my allies. In addition, she'd be asking us to lie to the police about a fairly serious incident. I see no benefit in that. But shouldn't we... Couldn't we at least admit some of the stuff Pig did? She's probably just scared for her life. No one ended up dying, so uh, no harm, no foul. Just because nobody died, your actions should be forgiven. I think the world would be better if there was more forgiveness around. It's an interesting quandary. If we were to lay the facts out as is, Pig could likely be painted as the villain by the media. Perhaps just as much as one of as Brian. I mean, the story's just too good. Not to mention she's a semi-relevant online presence. People had eat it up. I, for one, see no sin in a careful omission of facts, if it is to protect one's dignity. Honestly, I harbour no ill will towards Pig. She was dealt an unfortunate hand, played the game she best she could, and knew when to concede with grace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't just stay silent anymore. What to say? I'm totally with Snake on that. I never thought I'd agree with Snake on anything, but I'm totally with Snake. Yeah. I think we owe Pig at least this much. She was a victim. A victim of Brian, when you think about it. For her actions under these circumstances to define her. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's fair. Thinking about it rationally, simply not telling everything that happened really shouldn't matter too much. I'm inclined to agree. Pig's actions are hardly relevant to the case. I believe not much would be lost by skimping on those details. As a police officer, I can get behind that. Sounds like we're gonna hide the truth then. I guess. Y'all a bunch of pussies, but whatever. If that's what the group says, guess that's what we're doing. And so our course of action was decided. We'd fulfill Pig's last request and hide the full truth. Just as soon as the conversation had begun, it ended. Time passed. We'd stuck to the plan. No need to deviate. No traitors or complications. Just following simple rules. Eventually, it was near the end of the final round. I stood in the corner of the cafeteria, thoughts bouncing in my head. There was a lot to think about. Eventually, Dragon walked over to me. I know this might seem a weird, weird coming from me, but are you okay? Are any of us? True enough. It's really fucked me up, I can tell you that much. But you look different. You look like you're, uh... You're thinking again. I'm always thinking. Most people are. Now that's a lie if I've ever goddamn heard one. <laughs> you don't hang out with the right people. Sounds like I hang out with exactly the right people. Oh, the dumb ones are more fun. Anyway, what's this you're thinking about? The note Pig left us. It had a postscript. Oh. Thank god I found it, or else I fear the note might not have seen the light of day. At the end of the note there was a PS. I leave this last section as an apology to Brian. I don't know what to do with this information, but if there really was something at work about the trial, I figure I should say it. Before my motives changed, when I really was looking into the case, I did my best to follow the money. There's a saying in journalism, follow the money and you'll see the full story. Now there's a limit to what I could figure out from my position. What I'm about to say isn't based on hard evidence. In fact, I bet at this point, it'd be impossible to even find what I'm talking about. But I believe this information is solid. This trial confirms it for me. The victim, Amadeus Bowen, made a lot of hidden transactions, and a lot of them are connected to the people here. With the prosecutor's department that Ox works in, with the police precinct that Bunny works in, with the bar Dog works in, he employed sheep, he commissioned Snake for art, he was making a business deal with Tiger, there's evidence he gave money to a construction worker and took money from parents of an aspiring actor. The only pe people I can't remember having any connection to Armadeus Bowen are Mouse, Dragon, and Monkey. I don't know what this means, but... I don't know, I feel like I should write, this, write it down as well. So? So? Sounds to me like everyone here is fucking dirty. I admit, it doesn't sound great. But dirty of what? Dirty of something. I think it might be a mistake to connect everyone here, just... Together, just based on this though. I mean, for one, this is based on very shaky evidence. Pig's memory of her unproven investigation. And more to the point, look at everyone's personalities. Their backgrounds. Do you really think they could all be in on anything? It's like Pig said in the note. The fact that all of us are gathered here, it's got to be proof of something. Is it? What do you mean? I've been thinking this for a bit, but how did Brian get his hands on this information? He definitely wasn't old enough to do this sort of investigation when the incident happened. And even now, a high schooler shouldn't be able to get their hands on all this information, especially if it's being buried, like Pig claimed. Yeah, well, a high schooler also can't usually set up a fucking death game, but clearly not dealing with your average kid. The people Pig talked about are all here. That can't mean nothing. Alright then, in that case, why are you here? 
Huh? If we really were all brought here for good reasons, since what your what's your connection to any of this? I'm telling you, I don't have any. Really? Really? The only person that even looks somewhat familiar to me is Dog, but I can't place him. Beyond that, I got nothing. Hmm. There wasn't much more to say after that. Thinking didn't pause time. The round ended and the race board updated. To be honest, I couldn't even bear to look at the accursed thing. From the start, it had been far more trouble than it's worth. All that mattered was the announcement that came next. The finish line has been crossed. The winners are Rat, Ox, Tiger, Bunny, Dragon, Snake, Horse, Sheep, Rooster, and Dog. Congratulations. Anyone who has not won has lost. Prepare for execution. Those last words were a non-threat. After all, the only people who hadn't won were already dead. Just then, the collar came undone. We were... We were free. I breathed a huge sigh of relief. However, right before I could fully celebrate, a voice came in that stopped my heart. Congratulations, contestants. You've achieved a peaceful ending. I didn't have to execute anyone. You lucked out. The afflicted personalities were the two suicidal idiots willing to take one for the team. Brian. I don't know what game you were watching, jackass, but I wouldn't call pigs suicidal. She ended up killing herself, did she not? Ah, but I suppose that is aside from the point. I can't say that I'm overly pleased with this outcome. Two of the lighter criminals are dead. Don't get me wrong, they both deserved it. One perverted justice, the other refused to see the truth. But still, I can't help but feel the larger criminals got away. If you wished to kill us, you could have done so. You're yeah, not satisfied that you didn't get to appease your murder boner, you little shit. Taking, talking a lot of shit because things didn't work out how you planned? Do not misunderstand me. This is an intended outcome of the race. Everyone was given the chance to face justice for their sins. Sometimes you roll extremely lucky. We weren't lucky, I don't think. We just beat your game. You all seem awfully cocky for a group who just lost two of their members. We had to lose at least two people with your dumb rolls. <laughs> Blind men truly are jesters to those who can see. Now then, until we meet again. Just like that, the voice went away. The bent of superiority in Brian's voice had left us, has left us pissed off to, to no end, but I couldn't dwell on that now. Like it or not, we won. I may have lost Monkey, but ten of us didn't die. That might be as good as I could hope when thrust into such a shitty situation. In the end, myself, Ox, Tiger, Bunny, Dragon, Snake, Horse, Sheep, Rooster, and Dog escaped alive. This was a good ending. King of Spades. If nothing is found in the first three rounds but Sheep's clothing, Pig will be assigned a role that forces her to act. She's a coward, and if pushed towards it, will try to escape by herself. She doesn't have it in herself to kill, and will instead resort to letting the game mechanics do the work for her. In all likelihood, this plot will be thwarted, and a ma majority of the cast will be spared. This scenario makes fulfilling the objective particularly challenging, and cleaning up after the fact will be difficult. Now, this may be a good enough ending for Mouse, but it won't do for me. And with that, we need to wrap this one up because we are seriously out of time. We've got a lot of choices in that run-up to redo. Obviously, they're all going to end us in bad endings, but I want to do that anyway because sometimes it splits off on a wild tangent that goes all over the place. You know, because I just want to see. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.